Hello, I'm Darcy Bono and I'm currently recovering from laryngitis. That being said, I'm using a text-to-speech program with this smart English accent to do my talking. Damn I wish I sounded this cool in real life. Anyway, let's look at an easy and effective way to paint the blood red armor and cornate brass of the world eaters. To start, prime your mini in Mephiston red spray. Once it's dry, apply a single, undiluted coat of flesh terrors red contrast all over. You don't need to worry about pooling because we're going to be stippling and dry brushing over this red later, so any areas of oversaturation won't matter. The result will be a deep dark red, rather than the somewhat brick red that you started with. Once the flesh terrors red is dry, we're going to do some dry brushing and stippling using Evil Sun Scarlet. An even better alternative is Cardinal Red by Huge Miniatures. It's more vibrant and fiery than Evil Suns, so I highly recommend it, but if you don't have it, it's not a problem. I'll be using a round tip dry brush, in this case, an ELF makeup brush, as these are ideal for stippling and give a nice gradient when used for dry brushing. For those unfamiliar with stippling, it's very similar to dry brushing. Get most of the paint off your brush, and then, instead of flicking the brush back and forth, lightly jab the rounded surfaces, like you see here on this pauldron. This is why you want a round tipped brush, to give you that circle pattern instead of a line that a flat tipped dry brush would give you. This will also give you an appropriately rugged texture to your armor. So that being said, stipple the rounded surfaces, and dry brush them more textured. I'm also using this smaller concealer brush to stipple in harder to reach places. These cost about $2 and are sold at almost any major retailer that sells makeup. Next, do the exact same thing using Troll Slayer Orange. Be sure to leave a little of the Evil Sun Scarlet showing, in order to create a nice gradient. Primarily focus this orange on the sharpest edges and the highest points of the miniature. Your mini should look like blazing autumn foliage at this point. Now, here's where the magic happens. Make a glaze using flesh terrors red and contrast medium in about a 1 to 4 ratio. Then just smooth this glaze over the red-orange surfaces. I recommend using a wide brush, such as a filbert brush, that will allow you to make broad strokes, but will still give you quite a bit of control. And remember, the more thinly you apply this glaze, the more the orange underlayer will show through, resulting in a more fiery red. So here is our completed red once the glaze has dried. Right now, it doesn't look terribly impressive since every inch of this model is red, so let's add some cornate brass trim. We're actually going to start with a thin base coat of a bright silver. I highly recommend Vallejo Gamer Silver as it is very thin, but provides fantastic coverage. It also has a much finer flake, so it does not come off quite as glittery as other brands. You don't even need to thin this, as it is quite thin already. If you happen to get any of this silver on your nice red armor, don't worry, you can easily make a correction color. Just mix a speck of flesh terrors red into Evil Sun Scarlet and apply it over any mistakes. You can make this darker or lighter as you need by adjusting the amount of flesh terrors red. So don't be nervous when painting this trim, as errors are easily corrected. And on another note, I'm actually applying this silver to all future metal surfaces, including the inlay of the power armor, since I plan for this to be a metallic black later. Once the silver is dry, we're ready to turn it into a grimy brass. To do this, create a glaze of skeleton hoard, Garagox saw, and contrast medium in an even ratio. Contrast medium is key in allowing you to move the paint around smoothly, so don't skip on using that in your mix. Due to the finish of the metallic paint, it can cause your contrast mixture to pull and oversaturate areas on flat surfaces. To avoid this, don't load up your brush, but rather apply a thin layer and spread it in a solid swipe, like butter on toast. Again, this is really only something you need to worry about on the flatter surfaces like the larger pauldron trim.
While waiting for the brass color to dry, I went ahead and finished the rest of the other details on the mini. This is really all you need to do for the brass, but if you'd like, you can add a final edge highlight on the sharpest edges using Liberator Gold. This is a pale muted gold that is closer to a bronze and pairs well with this brass. I recommend applying it very sparingly, as you don't want this trim to look too shiny. So that's it for the corn colors. As far as the other details which weren't the main topic of this video, the dark metal inlay of the power armor was done with thinned black legion contrast over the silver base coat. The siliconum gray over the silver was used for the lighter silver surfaces, like on the hilt of the chain sword and the grenade on his belt. My tutorials for the blood splatter, flayed flesh loincloth, and basing, I included in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video despite my very unworld eatery narration. Hopefully my voice will return soon, but until then happy hobbying, and blood for the blood god.